Okay, this is the vlog for type B day trading, non-aggressive day trading for Friday, June 29th, 2018. Um, we are looking at uh, our six. Uh, we've got uh, Durham, Nike, KB Homes, uh, Wells Fargo, Citibank, and Fifth Third Banks. Um, we'll keep our eye on three others that were, were heavy catalyst moves. Uh, I don't kind of have them in the top six for various reasons, but uh, uh, oh wow, we just had our first down gapper uh, show up, Altaba, on our pre-market screener. Everything has been up and then that just popped up, so now I'm going to have to look at that. We've got uh, nine minutes left before the market opens and I'll, I'll take a peek and figure out. Oh, 107,000. I'll, I'll add it at least to the uh, lower watch list and keep an eye on it. All right. So anyway, this is what we're working with. Uh, I'll be back at the end of the trading day and we'll see how we do. Okay. So today was not a good day and it's one of those learning experience days. So we did end the day negative and made two mistakes that accounted for that. And I'll go ahead and detail what those were. Um, first, obviously, Derm here was the uh, the big loser, and that one was not your standard. Well, the price just went against you. It, there were factors that should have precluded me ever being in the trade at all, let alone in the trade for a thousand shares. So we'll we'll detail those. Um, only real bright spot was uh, Micron. Nike would have been a positive, except I made a mistake, which I'll detail and click the wrong thing. And then uh, Wells Fargo looked like it was uh, it was gonna give me something, and it just didn't. So overall today, uh, there were there were a lot of channels ascending and descending. Um, these can be tricky to trade. You know, you, you never know when they're gonna break out. Uh, you know, you, you, depending on your your order, kind of depends if you can profit in the cycle. So today was not a good day, and we're gonna come back next week. We're still positive for the week, uh, not much, but we're still positive for the week. But that is because I've been increasing my my share uh, or my my stake size every day. I did actually go up to twenty thousand today. And so these, this loss at 20,000 uh, still doesn't erase the gains of the week. But if you remember, the first day we traded, it was one and two thousand dollars. Then the the second day it was ten thousand, and then the third day it was fifteen thousand. So we can't read more into this than there is. It it was it was a negative day in a week where there were three positive days. And so once we're up to full uh, account usage will be in will be in better shape so all that said and this this nasty thing with a lot of red we we're not going to let it get to us because we're not aggressive and that goes both ways you know we try not to get too affected by the highs when everything goes our way and we just try to pick ourselves up when things don't we're way more bob ross than jim kramer here all right so let's get this out of the way uh there were Five trades total because I did wind up trading uh, Nike twice. So let's start with uh, Nike. Let's just do that. All right. Let me bring this screen over here with Nike. Let me make it a little smaller. So with Nike, um, there was a descending channel that formed. Like this was a day for descending channels. Normally. You know, like I said, I'm, I'm pretty good at these, but you've got to you got to get the right entry. And so, I one thing I still don't particularly care for about eSignal is it's just real tough to. There's so much. You know, I get it. You know, that this is coming in actually from my broker, and so you know, there's maybe I should be blaming IB, but uh, you know, it could be it could be managed better on the screen. Anyway, neither here nor there. Let's see if I can. I'm getting a little better at the zooming in, so let me see if I can just kind of zoom in enough so we we get to see it. So, uh, what I had intended here was that uh, uh, 
uh, I would be watching this channel. Obviously, I missed my entry. It would have been one, two, and then this should have been my entry. It's a descending channel. Channel. This is a channel, not a wedge. Descending channel. And that means it's going to break to the upside. That means you only play it long. So this is where I should have entered. However, I came in late to the game. Now, with these, you know, okay, you can call it chasing the trade, but it is part of a strategy. Uh, and it's the most common strategy with dealing with these to just wait for it to break. And in this case, when I came in, it was breaking. So I went ahead and bought in long. Now, what's the risk of that? Well, the risk is that it actually isn't breaking and it goes back down and does another fluctuation. So this was a mistake. This was a day for him. Uh, I should not have bought in long here. And what wound up happening was I actually hit the wrong key sold my position and then compounded it by kind of reflexively hitting a key that put me back in the position. So, you know, you see me buying in and then you see me selling out and then you see me buying in again. Um, actually, see me buying in again. Yeah, so I added a little bit here. Um, no, I had sold out, I bought in and then I sold out up here. So. What wound up happening was I went in, I accidentally went out, I wound up going in again, which I should not do. You should not go in again. And then I sold in stages up here because the volume went away and it just got flat. So, boom, I was out. End result, basically no gain, no loss, you know, right at the border. Um, all right, so let's look at Wells Fargo. So Wells Fargo, I did a little earlier today. And so with Wells Fargo, what I thought was shaping up was a bear triangle. So just to kind of bring it all in here if I can. Uh, it looked to me like from the open we'd gone up and we started making a nice bear triangle. So this one is uh, this one is also me being stupid. So I actually, on the bear triangle, I, I went short right here. So why did I go short right here? Well, because originally I had my line drawn differently. I had my line drawn like this, which fits up pretty well, right? But in reality, the line was something more like this. So the mistake I made was not waiting to get that consolidation along the line. Okay, this is a line of support. So I had sold short. All right. Price, if I, you know, whatever prices goes up, touches the line, starts back down, and then whammo, it goes the other way. Well, all right, this can just be the price going against us. That can be the case. Uh, and that's really what we're seeing here. You know, the triangle is there. It's just sometimes it's going to go the other way. It's the market, you know, it's fishing, not catching. So that one went against, I got stopped out and I lost 60 bucks in that. Okay, we can deal with that. So if we go to, just go to Micron. So Micron actually traded twice. Uh, Micron was the only, well, no, I'm saying that wrong. Uh, yeah, Micron was the only bright spot of the day. I'm not saying that wrong. So on Micron, we had an ascending wedge. And so with an ascending wedge, you're going to play it to the short. So what happened is, is we came up, uh, and I originally, of course, had my line drawn a little differently. You just have to imagine these without the rest of the, the candlesticks. You know, you're kind of drawing them. Okay, so with Micron, I sold in short at what I thought was an upper resistance line. And we did come back down from there. And I should have gone ahead and, and you know bought in half whatever, but we'd gone under the line, so I thought, all right, oh no, we're good. Well, then we came back up. Okay, that's not necessarily cause for panic because this is a descending 
chan or a wedge. It's an ascending wedge. It is an ascending wedge. So we expect that if it holds to pattern, it's going to come back down. I had my stop loss around up here somewhere. Just an extraneous line here. Uh, usually I cut these out. All right. So it didn't quite hit the stop loss, and I, you know, it wasn't it wasn't out of the trend line, so we weren't breaking pattern, and went ahead and dropped down again, just as it should, and it it did exactly what it should. It dropped down. Uh, I sold a third, came down here. I sold another third, and then I kind of gave it some time to see if it would continue down. Sold a third here. If I had held on, if I just kind of, you know, you got to remember, I bought in bought in up here. So if I just kind of set my stop loss up here and let it ride, we'd have been fine. But, you know, that's, that's, we're not aggressive. We'll take our money. So I took it right there. No worries. Now, what we did was we came over here, we set up to kind of a little symmetrical triangle that I did not do anything with. Real small, real tight. And don't even think I saw it. I think I was looking at something. I was looking at Durham at this time. And that, that popped to a great drop. So this would have been tradable. Um, and then we got an ascending channel this time. Okay, so this one I actually did really well. Uh, uh, I came in somewhere, uh, 53.07, right about there. So, you know, you're going to have some slippage, but that's considering the candlestick I bet in on, that's right on the trend line. So, came over here, kept going up a little bit, then it started on its down, started on its down, went ahead and covered a, a little bit here covered a little bit here and then then it started kind of acting goofy you know it was going back up so I went ahead in this candlestick it was right here actually uh, I covered I covered the rest and then it, it did its breakdown so that's okay I made some money and that's what we're doing so uh, in Micron I made some money uh, and in Dern Derm, I lost some money. Now, this is a real good learning experience. Let's look at Derm. So Derm is a, it had gapped up at the start. It had done a kind of a long downtrend. So the first mistake I made was trading Derm at all because it is under $10. Sure, it was over $10 at the start, had gapped up from this is a penny stock. This is just, yeah, okay, it might be, it's not on the over-the-counter, but it is a penny stock. And I don't do these stocks uh, for various reasons. And we'll, I go into those in my book more. Um, but what it had done was it had, it had formed up a symmetrical triangle. Okay, red-black play, right? Uh, figure it's going to go to the downside because that's that's what we've been doing. So I come into Dern and I'm like, all right, you know, it's it's 10 bucks. I've been trading 20,000 elsewhere. I'll just I'll trade 10,000 here. Well, okay. Look at the range. Look at the range. 10,000 shares of this is is 1,000 or $10,000 of this stock is 1,000 shares. So, this is a 5 cent range right here. So, 1,000 shares, that's 50 cents. So you go, you go three of these these little areas. That's 150 bucks. So was this greed? Was it stupidity? Was it, eh, you know, the max position size I should have had here, considering the this is the the range of the price uh, was maybe 500 shares. And the thing is, once I was in and I sold short here. Of course, you can see this is my this is where I originally drew the triangle. Um, when I sold in here, uh, I expected that. Uh, so I originally drew the triangle like this, you know, and I expected that we were real close to the drop, and it, it seemed to act like that. It seemed like it was setting up into the corner here and everything, and then it popped up. So while it was setting up in the corner, I'm kind of looking at it. And I'm thinking, yeah, my position size is way too big. While while it is a break even or a slight gain, I ought to sell down 500 shares, and I didn't. I should have. I didn't. It was common sense. I recognized that I was standing over a pit. I had the opportunity to, uh, you know, maybe get a handhold, and I didn't take it. 
and that was aggressive. That was an aggressive move on my part. I was sitting out there with more risk than I was comfortable taking given the scale of what I'm trading right now. I'm not expecting to get $500 days when I'm trading $10,000. Uh, if you do, then you're going to get a lot of negative 700, negative 800 dollar days to go along with it. So this was aggression on my part, and it needs to not be there. Uh, I knew I should sell half of my position out. I didn't. I could have got out at the end. You know, I'd have had a much better day. That was a huge mistake. That was aggression and non-aggressive trading, and I paid for it. Price came back up, came down. I actually had another chance to get out. And I, I just was so convinced. I was I was doing crystal balling. I was so convinced this was going to go down. Well, my discipline remained that I was able to stop out at my stop loss. And I'm glad I did. It went up. Yeah, sure, whatever. It came down. But this is this is another problem. The volume at these points was ridiculously small. Look, that's under a thousand shares being traded. The volume had just gone away on this triangle. Even when I bought in, the volume was tiny. I never, ever should have entered this position. But I did. I never should have been a thousand shares, but I was. So, Derm is a learning experience, and the market really does have one way to teach you, and that's by taking your money. And that's what Derm did. So, what do we learn going forward? Well, you can't do under $10 stocks and say you're a non-aggressive day trader. Non-aggressive day trading is being the casino, not being the gambler. You're setting things up so that the odds inexorably and inevitably are in your favor. You didn't have that here. This this was this was a gamble. Remember, we do we do red black plays, okay? And this was a red black play. I, I just it is a red black play, but I was playing it like it wasn't. So what's a red black play? A red black play is one that, due to our position size and our stop loss, we will we will gain when it goes our way more than twice what we will lose when it doesn't. And that means a 50-50 coin toss is going to go your way eventually. Here's the best way to explain a red-black play and why we take them. Get a, get a pile of beans or beads or something, you know, in front of you and then get a little empty bowl and get a quarter. And what you do is you take 10 beans from the pile, put them, put them in your bowl, okay? Then start flipping your quarter. Call it, see what it is. Every time you're right, you take two beans out of the pile and you put them in your bowl. Every time you're wrong, you take one bean out of the bowl and put it back in the pile. Now what's going to happen is all the beans in the pile are going to be in your bowl. Over time, you are going to win half of your coin tosses and you are making twice what you are losing. That is why we do red-black plays. This, as a red-black play, should have been set up with a proper position size. Honestly, 250 shares at the scale I'm dealing with would have been appropriate. It was, it was very unprofessional of me to come in, look at a $10 stock at all, and say, well, I'll, just, I'll do 10,000 shares. I had no business being here. This, look, all traders go through periods of time where they're learning the ropes, they're making stupid mistakes. This was a throwback to stupid mistakes I made a long time ago. And I just went ahead and did it again. Anyway, I'm lamenting the fact that I lost money on this trade. We lose money on half our trades. The reality is at the scale I was at, it's the amount of money I lost, the exposure that I had. I got my stop loss. I My stop loss was right here. I hit it. But look where it is, you know, one, two, almost three of these up from where I went in. That means it cost me 130 bucks, then with commissions, 140. So I hit my, my stop loss was activated. I, I maintained discipline there, but it was my position size that was the problem. And really trading a stock that's, okay, under 10, eh, 
but it had no volume. So, enough. That was Derm. It's uh, water behind us, and we're motoring forward. So, we are slightly positive for the week. It's like 30 bucks, but considering we've ramped up our scale, we'll take it. Next week, we are going to be 20 or 25 at the start, and we'll see how it goes. Uh, we should, uh, well, you know, also throw in we've got July 4th next week. So uh, I'm sure a lot of traders are going to take Monday and Tuesday off, and possibly an equal number are going to take Thursday and Friday off, because 4th of July is on a Wednesday. So next week might be iffy. Uh, I really need to double down on the mindset that you just don't trade if you don't see a perfect setup. So volume might be an issue next week. We'll see. Everybody uh, have a great weekend, and we'll see you back here on Monday.